the interstitial space. Because this is the Paramatma, the universal spirit or the ultimate reality. And you are more uh, uh, living the life in the thought, forgetting the inner essence and the sutra. But when you become a stranger to your thoughts, you move into Shiva, then your thoughts become distant to you. In the Eskimo language, I am told that thought means that which is external to you. What a beautiful thing is this? Thought means that which is external to you. The Master Krishnamurti has mentioned this in one of his talks. Thought is that which is external to you. So don't be in the company of thoughts. Keep a distance from all the rascally thoughts. And every thought is rascally, whether it's good, bad or ugly. You're getting it? Yeah. How can, uh, how can we learn to identify the thoughts that are important and the thoughts that are not really important? Because you mentioned that we should think, right? Yeah. When we're supposed to think. Yeah. But uh, for me, I think it's always important. So when, when do we know the thought is not really important when, and when do we know that we really need to think? You actually have the answer to this question yourself. Because you know that there are times in our life when thought has to be very active. There are times in our life. For example, you are playing a tennis match. You are playing tennis. And then at that time, you cannot say, Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Then the person has to go and meditate in the cave. He can't play tennis. So there is a time and place for everything. Now you go to the golden city. You are in a oneness retreat. Now at that time, should thought be active? No. And should you be the owner of the thoughts? No. And in cultivation of the spiritual life, will you be always in the company of 200 thoughts? Obviously not. You're not going with me. You want lunch? <laughs> so you got, to, you got the answer within yourself. There's a time for uh, thought, and thought is part of the divine. It's created by the divine. But in speaking of the higher spiritual life, then a time comes in your life when you have to keep a distance from thought and thought has to function. Thought has to, first of all, slow down. Thought has to slow down. And then it has to function at a very low key. Because only then Shiva will stand out in relief. And the whole object of the spiritual life is to kind of uh, make Shakti take rest and bring Shiva into the foreground. And this might mean, actually, this might mean a reduction in functionality when Shiva comes into the foreground and Shakti becomes more uh, restful. And which is why the ancients also said, reserve the higher spiritual life for the full flowering of the spiritual life to happen after 60. Because after 60, when you become somewhat less functional or non-functional, you are in trance, you are in meditation, then your boss is not going to kick you. But when you become non-functional at 30 or 40, then you are going to get a memo in your office. So there is a time when thought has to be rested. Now we are talking of a, a situation where thought has to subside and you have got to become uh, you are you're not all the time uh, kind of jumped into the swimming pool of thoughts and all the time being in the company but just come out of it and this is the picture so where it becomes clear to you that you are this threat yes I think the mic we need the mic there relaciona justo a esta del pensamiento cómo estudiar las escrituras con un pensamiento que se aproxima más a esta inteligencia cómo estudiar las, las escrituras para continuar en el camino espiritual o para cómo, cómo sin caer en este pensamiento que parece que es tu pensamiento cómo me parece como una línea muy delgada el pensamiento como de intelectual, de científico que cree su, que su pensamiento y sus descubrimientos y el, ana, el análisis y me imagino que tienes que estudiar las escrituras desde este más inteligencia como me parece difícil como pensar en Shiva
Shiva, como un pensamiento desde Shiva, como estudiar desde Shiva, como ser científico desde Shiva. Mi traductora ya se fue. No, pero no, 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 es que no, 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 Very restless. Mm, mm, mm. So she's asking how. Okay, okay. But she knows the answer herself. Because so long as you're very worldly and Shakti is very active, then you're not going to understand uh, religion and the scriptures and you won't come near it. You'll avoid it like a barge pole. Okay. But when you're settled down and consciousness has settled down and you become so calm and peaceful, then obviously a different kind of an inquiry begins, a religious inquiry, Atma Vichara, as it is called in Hindu India. And then you take up a, a book and there is a way to study the scriptures. For that matter, there is a way to study any book. You have got to be very, very slow and you have got to get into the shoes of the author, what he is trying to communicate. And it may be necessary to read many paragraphs two times three times, but the acquisitive mind, which is very dominant in Artha and Kama, wants to finish a book in two hours and tell the world, I've read that book. <laughs> now, just finished. You become a big fool. Now this is very deep study, because this study is not an achievement. You're not going to tell anybody, yes, I've read this book, I've read that book. No. You may read only ten pages of the Bible, and that's enough for you. Because you get the whole essence of what it's all about. And you need a mind which is very quiet, a consciousness which has kind of settled down, and then you're going to understand the passage, Moses in the Sinai Desert, in the Old Testament. You get the full significance of it. But you've got to be very quiet. And you've got to be a true seeker. If you're a worldly person, nothing is going to get in. Just comes in here, goes out here. So that is why go back to the wisdom of the rishis of India. After 60, everything is flowering. Till 60, theoretical teaching. And the teaching from the age of 7 till the age of 21 in Dharma and in Moksha, theoretical teaching with the children and the young people never really understood. You need the experience of life for those seeds to sprout and come to full bloom. Without the experience of life, they're not blooming. Please try to see everything in a comprehensive manner. Because the acquisitive mind wants results overnight. Sorry, wrong number. They're not getting anywhere. Does that satisfy you? You're not happy, I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So shall we move forward? So food for thought, for you to think. So this is again uh, the nature of the Atma. Ache dhyoyam adahyoyam. Akle dhyo sosya evacha. Nityaha 